Let's talk about vision improvement. The number one question that I have to, if any one or two of you want to talk about, is what is your vision challenge? Do you have any vision challenge, specifically? Any one of you? Reading. Yeah. Reading is a problem. For yeah. You. Without glasses. Without huh? glasses. With glasses, I'm okay, but without glasses, it's becoming harder to focus. Uh, Jean, do you have the papers? Yes. Can I get one? Yes. I want to ask you a question. You say with glasses you're okay. Yeah, you have to. Can you read number eight for me? With your glasses. No. <laughs> you, can, you can read the number though. Can't you? I can read the number. <laughs> How about seven? Uh, I can read some of that of all the eye exercises. So seven you can do. Yeah. With difficulty six, no problem, right? Six is easy. Yeah. Can't easy. Do okay. But do you know how many people, and I'm willing to bet that in your youth you could read number eight without any problem. Yeah. And so glasses fix the vision. You see much better than you see without them, but you don't see nearly as well as you used to see when you were an adolescent, yeah. right? So some of the vision have decreased anyway, right? Anybody else has any vision challenge? Yes. Go ahead. I've got the macular degeneration and it's... How bad is it? It's not terribly bad yet. Sometimes as I'm reading, hey, hey. it all goes black. Take away the word yet. Yet. <laughs> Today we're coming to talk about reversing it. Oh, good. So if you say the word yet, your eyes have ears. <laughs> and that's, that's the problem when doctors tell you that something cannot be reversed. So then you completely believe they can't be reversed. Real bad macular degeneration is not a spot on the macula or some place that is missing in the macula. Mm -hmm. Real macular degeneration is one where you look at my face and I have no nose. Yes. Or uh, you look at my face and all you see is a forehead and chin. That's real macular degeneration. And that's what we want to ever prevent. And I think it's quite possible. Mm -hmm. And actually I'm happy that we're starting with you because uh, when you look at that uh, um, armless grid chart, do you have some missing points? Yes, down the left hand side. And is then it goes brown. As I'm looking at it, it all goes brown. That's a very good time for you to intensively work on your eyes. By the way, I think one thing um, that I want to say is this. Vision is getting worse uh, in the last 10 years than it was the 100 years before that. It's getting worse all the time. And the problem with vision getting worse all the time is that the medical profession is not really equipped to fix it because all the medical profession does works on symptoms, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, if you don't see well, they prescribe glasses for you. Mm -hmm. That is like if you say, I have a problem walking and they'll give you a cane or crutches to walk with or a walker. Instead of, I mean, sometimes I'm happy there is a walker because then we can get a person out of the wheelchair and get him to walk. Mm -hmm. But then quite often physiotherapy as well as uh, orthopedics will give you a walker or will give you crutches long before they need to. I personally prefer that people would exercise with the legs, that people will move better, and then as a last resort, if we don't succeed with them, yes, then we give them crutches or canes. What happens is all you need to do is see 5%, even not as much as 5%, less than the 2020 chart, and you're being prescribed glasses, right there and then. And there's a research that have shown that when chickens get glasses for nearsightedness, the eyeball becomes long, which means it becomes a nearsighted eye. Okay? Chickens. So think about humans. Yeah. They gave them lenses, they gave them glasses, but gave them minus prescription, which is a myopic prescription, and they, within a week, start to have long eyes. What I want to say is that glasses actually make our eyes worse. Glasses are not solution. For an eye problem, it's a solution for long-term degeneration of the eye. And all the reasons with which the eye became worse are not being addressed. Are not being Just because you are far-sighted and your uh, lens is stiff and the muscles around the lens are weak, 
uh, prescribing for you glasses with which you see better while it really hits the spot and helps you in this moment and makes you feel much better, you're not straining. The problem with that is that the lens does not stop to be stiff and the muscles mm -hmm. around the lens don't stop to be weak. You know, mm -hmm. so basically what you get is crutches for the eyes. That is the medical treatment. Now continue with the fact that if you have an elevated eye pressure, they don't even care why you have it, they give you drops to reduce it. All right. <laughs> okay, the reason for the elevated eye pressure does not go away until they become a big problem with that. They give you drops, then they do a surgery, they, they put a hole in the canal, they're very, very good at doing those particular things, but it's always a band-aid on a problem rather than fixing the problem. It's, you wear glasses, you have to look through the focal point of the lens. So the eyes don't move much, you have to move your head, basically. Um, and uh, that leads to strain in the retina. And I fold glasses for many of the problems that eyes have. When you wear contacts, that is not the problem. You can actually move your eyes all you want. The only problem is the eyes don't breathe as much because the cornea should breathe. And those which are considered to be, uh, 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 you know, those permeable lenses that the oxygen can go through are the hardest one to clean. Okay? And then it compromises the immune system of the eye because the eye should reject any foreign object. And when you get those contacts in, then the only way that the eyes adjust to it is by weakening its own immune system. Okay? Now let's go for the next point. Laser surgery, we call them in America LASIK, is a butchery of the eye, in my opinion. You only do a surgery when it's necessary. And basically it's a cosmetic surgery that may, gives you a thinner cornea. And that thinner cornea could be a reason for so many problems, I can't even start to count them. First of all, you have less protection for the rest of the eye because the cornea is a part of the protection of the eye. But second of all, you can get astigmatism. So you see better. Most people who have that surgery, the success rate there is in the 90s. It's fantastic. The only problem is the side effects are into 60 or 70% of them. And basically all prescriptions eventually are not good enough. So within eight or nine years, you have to do it again. Then you have a thinner cornea. Some people even cheat consultants and don't tell them they had the surgery so they make the cornea even thinner you know I think all of this treatment eventually leads to a disaster I mean we are seeing worse all the time is not to harbor on symptoms and try to fix them by the way macular degeneration cannot be fixed by the medical profession the only thing they can do is if there's bleeding they'll give you um, uh, injections to basically destroy the vessels that cause the bleeding but then they will not stop the vessels from appearing there because those vessels come since there is not enough blood flow the body creates capillaries and the capillaries are imperfect so they leak that's the worst kind wet macular degeneration dry macular degeneration is because basically there is no phagocytosis which means there is no reduction of all the phagocytes that naturally are being formed in our whole body there is toxins and there is cleaning there is toxins and there is cleaning and it's not being done. So the phagocytes are staying there and create a condition called drusen, okay, which eventually leads to a destruction of the macula. So none of it is being addressed by medicine. So let's right now start to go backwards and start to say, why these days we have eye problems? Let me just tell you, when Dr. Bates invented natural vision improvement in the beginning of last century, he was attacked by all the medical profession. The fathers of ophthalmology have attacked him, uh, who were alive then. The uh, uh, scientists from Austria have attacked him. He was really uh, under the weather because, partially because of his personality, because he talked to them in a blunt way. You never do it to established people, you know. But also because he asked them to change the way that they think. I do the same thing, by the way. I asked them to change the way they think, but I'm not in the stature of Dr. Bates, so it's a bit easier. They don't have to listen to me. In that time, at least they argued with him. So anyway, the, um, uh, the, the point there was that he was upset that instead of 2% of nearsighted people, uh, nearsighted kids in upstate New York, there was 6%. He saw it as a myopia epidemic in the United States. Right? Well, 
I wish we return anywhere close to his time. I would love to have 6% of the kids with nearsightedness. Today, 55% of the kids have nearsightedness. In the past, if you had uh, glasses, kids would call you glasses, was Horashi for that, you would call you four eyes, we would call you all kinds of names. Today, if you have glasses, as if you have a hat, there's no difference. Everybody wears glasses, not everybody, but 55% of them. And that is disastrous, you know, why? Why is that the case? Because we read, okay? Um, now I'm coming to a bookstore and tell you reading causes eye problems, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's way beyond what we think, okay? Basically, uh, in the past, our ancestors used to be hunters, they used to be farmers. They didn't look at uh, Time magazine to know what the news is, their news was what they saw in front of themselves in the distance, right? Farmers did not listen to a uh, weather report where they always say that there is 70% of that and 30% of that. They can never be wrong there, right? Anyway, <laughs> so um, they used to look at the cloud formation at the distance. And today, today, people read. And even if you live in the country, people look at a computer a lot. It's kind of funny to see people that buy a beachfront property that's cost $15,000, $50 million and they get friends to show them how beautiful the property is and then they sit down and play cards, right? Um, so the, 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 point is, the point is, we do not look enough at a distance. We have no incentive to look at a distance. Our food is not at a distance. We don't hunt animals at a distance. We're not going to be hunted if we don't look at a distance. In fact, everything is from near, right? That is definitely a recipe for eye problems because the muscles of the lens are meant to be relaxed most of the day and contracted from time to time, just like the muscles of your arms. Just think that you would lift weights all day long. Well, lifting them to some extent, even lifting them vigorously in the gym, gym is a good thing. But, li but if you contract your muscles all day long, you may have spasm, okay? So when you basically work looking at a computer for eight hours a day and then you rest by doing computer games at home. I mean, you may rest your mind, but not your eyes. And uh, the, the thing that happens is the lens becomes basically frozen. It becomes convex on a regular basis and doesn't move much. By the way, that's the reason for cataracts, because what's cataracts is basically the generation of the lens. The lens, instead of being uh, transparent, becomes opaque. And that's the, the, the lens has wonderful properties. So basically, what I want to say here is that we need to understand that there's more than people, and it doesn't matter if you live in London, in Devon, even in Devon, there's so many beautiful views there, it doesn't matter where you live. More than people, whether you live in London, Devon, or Beijing, makes no difference. Look from near way too much. Even this room, which is basically larger than many rooms, is so small, it's nothing comparing to the waves in the ocean, to the rivers, and to the forests, right? So basically, people are looking from near much of the time and hardly look from far. And there are several uh, procedures, that, uh, things that are happening in the eyes. The lens becomes very stiff, the muscles around it become very weak, and first of all, spastic, and then weak from overstrain. And then the third thing happens, there is a fluid which is in the back of the eye called the vitreous fluid that fills in and makes the eye ball longer. And that's the beginning of nearsightedness with many kids these days and we have to start and prevent that from happening. So number one, what we do without knowing. The worst thing is that we're not aware of the strain. Number two, um, what happens these days is that we don't look at details. It's interesting what I'm telling you because if you're going to buy any book, you're going to look at details. But here's the truth. You're not interested in how the letters are structured. Unless it's choreography, you want to really know the content. So before you know, instead of reading you know, a letter at a time, you're going to read a sentence at a time, a paragraph at a time, sometimes a page at a time. Here is what happens. You have in the center part of your retina, macula, M-A-C-U-L-A, -A, macula. This nice lady knows what it is simply because she's having a problem with it. And I would like to help her not to lose it, right? Um, but uh, basically, um, by the way, what's your name? Carl. 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 Mm -hmm. Carl. Carl knows what it is. But 
the rest of you have to know what it is, and it is the central part of the uh, photoreceptor fields within the retina that sees fine details. It is only a percent and a half of the whole size of the photoreceptor fields. So it can only see a small area at a time. It cannot see a big area at a time. And because it can only see a small area at a time, uh, the moment that you look at a big area all at once, like instead of a letter at a time, you look at a whole paragraph or a whole page, none of it is as clear as it could be. None of it is as acute as it could be. Because the cells around the macula are not equipped to see as well. By the way, eagles have two maculas. So they can actually see a prayer and uh, uh, fly towards it from half a kilometer, you know. We have one macula, and it's a good one. Better than the primates have, better than many animals have. And we don't use enough of it. And the result is it degenerates. First of all, we don't see well, and then we lose the macula. Okay? Another thing that happens is we never learn to adjust to different light frequencies in the modern time. One thing, let me be controversial. I guess I wasn't until now, right? <laughs> um, I'm against sunglasses. Is that controversial? Yes. Right, very good. Uh, uh, almost all, of, uh, 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 almost every ophthalmologist in the world will tell you to wear them much of the time. They even will tell you to wear them indoors in strong fluorescent light, right? I am extremely, extremely against them. Because sunglasses do few things. First of all, they don't allow your pupils to constrict all the way. And without the pupil constricting all the way, we can never see as well. Okay? Just give you a sense of it. Look through your fist at anything, whether it's a book, whether it is a purse, anything. Look through your fist. Do you see how clear it is when you look through your fist? Mm -hmm. That's what the pupils do when they narrow or constrict within the eye. That's why we sell pinhole glasses. You can see through that. But you have a pinhole effect when you can adjust to the sun. If people say sun bothers me, they tell me my pupils are weak. Some people are bothered by walking. Is that good for them then to not walk? No. They need to walk. <laughs> Same thing is here. Instead of being, it's deciding I'm bothered by the sun, adjust to the sun. And the way to adjust to the sun is described well in my literature. And by the way, I really hope to see some of you as far as it is, like an hour and 15 minutes from here to go to Cambridge. I'd like to see some of you in my workshop in Cambridge, unless you want to come to Italy to see me there. <laughs> you know, nice. uh, San Francisco would be good, yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, what I'm saying is, um, so anybody tell me Cambridge is far, I just understand other distances, right? But anyway, the exercise is that we close our eyes and we move the head from side to side. As we face the sun, the pupils constrict. As we move away, the pupils expand. And that's a nice, like, uh, you know, biceps curls with weights. So you strengthen your iris muscles. So we need to adapt to the sun and not escape the sun and only wear sunglasses when the sun is in our eyes when we drive or if we go to ski or something. But, or if you now had a disease and you get out of bed, it's hard to adjust to the light. Things of that nature. Make it a real exception unless you go to a nice party and you want to wear sunglasses. There's no problem with that, you know. Uh, just like it's not good for your back to have high heels, but if a lady goes um, uh, twice or three times uh, a year, well, good luck, yeah, to a party with high heels, it's no big deal, right? But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, we really need to learn to start to adjust to the sunlight. But there's the other side of it. Look when we have the lecture. We have the lecture today. Uh, supposedly, it was supposed to start at 6.30. Uh, you should throw some eggs at your instructor. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, uh, you have the lecture today, several hours after sunset. It's so unnatural. We turn those lights on, and that's wonderful. It can move industry. Uh, it can um, uh, have commerce, it can uh, make you feel safe in the streets, but you know what? It doesn't really allow you to use the stars and the moon. You cannot see the constellations from London, by no means. You can see something, but not much. You can see better in Devon, but even those people have street lights. I think that uh, for a million years we learned to adjust to the dark of the night and right now we don't learn to adjust to the dark of the night so the only thing I would like to ask from 
every audience here is when you are going to sleep turn the lights on you need to go to the bathroom I mean sorry turn the light off you need to go to the bathroom try to find your way so you don't bump your head against anything but try to not use uh, artificial light in the middle of the night it really hurts the eyes okay never do actually yeah that's a very good thing okay so that means that part of your eyes will remain healthy here we're talking about the periphery of the eyes Another thing is we never look enough at our periphery, okay? Uh, let me ask you a question. Anybody of you uses computer in a busy office? Mm -hmm. You oh, do. Not in an office, but in my office at home. No, office, office. Anybody use a computer in a busy office, in a library, at home, I mean, at work, anywhere? Yes, Any? about an hour a day. An hour a day. Yes. Now, let me ask you a question. What's your name? Paula. Paula. Very noisy and very busy and you have a very important document right in front of you. What would you do then to be able to make this document work for you? I need to concentrate. So you ignore the periphery? Yes. Now Paula, let me ask you a question. Let's say that I give you a laptop, send you to the wild jungle, and you will concentrate talking about the adventures you have in the jungle and you will ignore your periphery. A week later, would you be here to tell us about all your adventures? Probably not. <laughs> I think you'd be eaten, right? <laughs> Basically, for a million years, for a million years, humanity developed peripheral vision. Right? For a million years. And right now, we are blocking it every day, every time we can block it, we block it. Okay? Paula described how, but not only Paula, even when you sit at home, what do you care about the walls? What do you care about the ceiling? What do you care about the desk? You have the computer. So before you know, you put so much strain on the central vision. A, we don't use it enough. We don't look at enough details. We try to come picture with the central uh, periphery and the, and the macula. But then we don't pay attention to the peripheral vision. So that's what happens to us. And that is the reason for high pressure in the eyes and that's the reason for glaucoma. Okay? Cataracts because we don't look enough at a distance. Macular degeneration because we don't look at details enough. Small details, fine details. Glaucoma because we don't have enough peripheral vision. You see where things start? They start with our normal activity. And that's what makes my book so important. Because I try to create a silent revolution. And the revolution is giving you tools to work on yourself every day in response to your lifestyle. Not as Londoners or uh, as British people, but as modern people. Anywhere you are, anywhere they exist, you need to do some things that are not being done by most people. And that's why I have the seven principles of natural vision improvement. Can you get me a book, please? Sure. About this uh, book that we have four eye charts in the back of the book. One of them is for you to measure your vision once every three weeks or a month and to see its progress and you will see progress i'm sure about that okay in 196 pages 196 pages okay i have discussed everything from how to overcome nearsightedness farsightedness astigmatism cross-sightedness how to prevent cataract and deal with post-cataract surgery. How to prevent glaucoma and deal with glaucoma when it happens. How to work with eyes with macular degeneration. What to do when you're legally blind to improve your vision a bit and adjust to it. 196 pages. I mean, mo most books on one of those top topics would be very thick. I made it as thin as possible and as uh, friendly as possible, but they stand up everybody. I think you said for too long. Yeah, my leg up there. Hold, uh, hold the chair if you need to. Yeah, hold the chair. I'll get my leg up in the way. And then um, grab your other leg and stretch backwards a little bit. As you do this. Okay, you can have a seat back. By the way, this is something very good to manage your back because we're sitting too much in our life. You're sit we're sitting too much in our life, and so we have to um, 
we have to work on that, you know, on uh, stretching our back and things of that nature. Okay. So, um, the first principle is deep relaxation of the eyes, because I truly believe that stress of the eyes leads to most of the eye problems that exist. So before I go for all the rest of the exercises, or the principles, I want you first of all to look at this page, and without glasses, please. And there's two sides to the page, so anyone who cannot see the, fr the front part can look in the back part. But look at whatever letters you can see uncomfortably, which means they're a bit smaller than you like to see them, like number four for most of your thing, but you can still read them without glasses, please. Otherwise, we don't know oh, that we no, improve. Go, look at the other side and look at number one. Then it's okay, right? Yeah. All right. So when you say I got a problem, you compare your eyes without glasses to the eyes with glasses. Please don't do that. It's like comparing yourself how quickly you can go in a scooter wheelchair versus how you can you walk if your legs are weak. Look at what your eye sees naturally and don't judge yourself. No. Okay? Is that possible for everybody? No. Very good. Even if it, is, if it is not vivid. Exactly. Even if it's not vivid. Our job is to try and work on it so it will be a bit more vivid. See, I, everybody says a picture is worth a thousand words. And I say a demonstration is worth a thousand pictures. Not allowed to elevate your shoulders. Jean, can you come here for a second? Yes. Okay. So. See this? Okay. Okay. I want you to touch all the people in the back. I'll touch all the people in front. Let me show you how you touch. To put it gently like this. Okay, um, let me go behind here. I just am touching you so you should understand that gentle does not mean withdraw. Many people kind of gentle, no, no. Gentle could be very penetrating. It's like you bring warmth and you bring uh, relaxation to the eyes, okay? It is a real healing thing because tissues do connect to each other. Feel this? Just relax, okay? Uh, whom have you done already? Okay, come closer to me. Yes, Hi. Hi. <laughs> just relax. This is gentle. Okay. That's really my energy. Exactly. So. So gentle means. Feels nice, huh? Loosening your shoulders up. Now point your hands upwards. All the way. Put your watches in your pockets, rings in your pockets if possible, if you can get them off, I'm not, don't make an extra effort. Rub your hands and just remember that in preparation to palming, we must loosen our shoulders. Okay, now sit down. Is it possible, is it not possible to turn lights off right now? Okay? And you never elevate your shoulders with this exercise. You visualize that you're seeing complete darkness. The minimum that we need to do, that's the first time I'm going to turn my um, um, phone on because I want to see the time. But the minimum you need to do it is six minutes. And what I want you to do is focus on your breathing. Okay? So you focus on your breathing. You breathe in and you breathe out. In through your nose, into your abdomen and lower back, and out through your nose. In through your nose, and out through your nose.
Now count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now exhale and count to fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You listen to music, stories on tape. In fact, they'll be here CDs with my stories on them, right? When you breathe out. You don't tense. You don't stress. You just let yourself be. But never put pressure on your cheekbones. Never put pressure on your uh, shoulders. You can put pressure with your elbows, there's no problem with that. But never on your shoulders, never on your cheekbones. And while I don't want you to put pressure on your mind, visualize you see darkness and maybe even blackness. You visualize that you're seeing darkness and maybe even blackness. And you breathe in and you breathe out. Six minutes is the minimum for this exercise. Maximum could be anything, as long as your shoulders and your uh, hands are relaxed. This is a good exercise to repeat several times a day. To focus on your eyes, to go inside without stressing yourself out. Breathe deeply and breathe slowly. Okay, slowly take your hands off. Six minutes past. Isn't that amazing? Nice feeling, huh? All right. All of you stand up, please. So when I move to the right, I lift the left heel. When I move to the left, I lift the right heel. Move from side to side, thinking everything moves opposite in the way you move. You move to the left, everything moves to the right. You move to the right, everything moves to the left, think. And everything seems to be moving opposite than you move. By the way, how does the print look to you right now if you did that? Now turn the lights on, please.